Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about vectorization. So there are a number of different ways that we can add parallelism to our programs. Now, up until this point, we've largely looked at adding parallelism through adding threads that will all contribute um, to completing some objective. Now, another type of parallelism that we can exploit is within a single thread. And what we're going to be looking at today is vectorization. So vectorization involves the use of vector instructions or SIMD instructions. SIMD just standing for single instruction, multiple data. So we can have a single instruction that, that you know, operates on multiple pieces of data at once. So for example, we can have a SIMD add instruction that maybe does um, four adds or eight adds in a single instruction. So, we're, so there's a couple different ways that we can apply vectorization to our programs. We can, you know, offload it to the compiler and enable what we call an auto vectorizer to vectorize our program for us. Or we can add it mainly, manually using things like SIMD intrinsics. Um, now today we're going to be focusing on just using, you know, the auto vectorizer of our compiler, but in the future we'll write some hand tuned stuff with the SIMD intrinsics. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll go ahead and open up our example here. So we're going to be vectorizing um, this dot product uh, example. So we'll go ahead and open this up and to time our code, we're going to be using Google Benchmark this time. So Google Benchmark is a great micro benchmark support library. Um, I have the GitHub page on the right hand side of the screen here. And there's a nice readme that gives you the basics of how exactly you write uh, benchmarks and you know the basics of how to you know download and build Google Benchmark itself. So I'll link this below the video. Um, but let's go ahead and see you know, what exactly our benchmark is doing. So the way Google Benchmark works is you define a function here, and that's that's going to be your benchmark. You can write whatever setup code you want, just normal C++. And then you can specify a timing loop down here. So this is what you're actually benchmarking or what Google Benchmark is actually timing for you. It's just taking all that boilerplate uh, code that you would normally need out of your hands. So in this case, what are we doing, right? So we're going to create uh, a couple vectors with some random numbers, so just some random integers in this case. So random integers between one and 10. Then um, we're gonna have two vectors here, V1 and V2, with two to the 15 elements each. Um, so we'll use this uh, generate n to uh, create those random numbers inside of these vectors. And then we're going to have our actual timing loop down here, where we're going to do our dot product. Now all a dot product really is, is we're gonna do a pairwise multiplication of all the elements in our two vectors. And then we're gonna sum up all those results, right? That'll give us um, a dot product. So in this case, we're going to do that with std transform reduce, which can take an execution policy. So we can say if something is sequenced or it's unsequenced, um, unsequenced meaning uh, vectorized, or we can, and we can also specify uh, std execution par to say we want this parallelized across different threads. Now today we're mainly just gonna focus on vectorization. So we'll just leave this std execution unseek here. Now for the rest of our you know, transform reduce call, we just pass it the bounds of our vectors. So the beginning and end of vector one, and then vector two, just the beginning, and it can uh, infer the uh, length from uh, V1's length here between beginning and end. And then we'll specify an initial value here. So what we want to add that sum to, um, and in this case, right, we're accumulating with an initial value of zero. Now you can specify custom you know, operators that you want called here, but in this case, transform reduce does exactly what we want by default. It'll multiply uh, pairwise the elements of V1 and V2, and then sum up all those results. So we can just use the defaults there. Okay, so that's going to be our dot product. So what we're gonna be looking at first is a serial version, or rather one without vectorization. And the way that we're going to get that is by just compiling this program um, without enabling the auto vectorizer with our compiler. So let's go ahead and see how that looks here. So we'll go ahead and compile um, zero.product.cpp. Uh, we'll call our output just as zero.product. Um, then what we can do is enable some flags here. So we'll do O2 optimization still. So we still want our program optimized, but just without vectorization. O2 doesn't include vectorization. Uh, then we'll go ahead and link against a couple things. So we'll link against lib uh, benchmark here. That's for Google Benchmark, and so is lib pthread. Both of these are for Google Benchmark. And we'll set the standard equal to C20 because we're using std ranges in there. Okay, so we've compiled our benchmark. Uh, let's go ahead and run this and we'll do perf record at the same time so we can look at the assembly afterwards. So we'll go ahead and run this. 
And what we see is that it takes about, you know, 14.7 microseconds to run, right? And you can see that it got this timing for running, you know, that, that inner loop there, you know, about 47,000 times here. So this should be fairly consistent across runs here. It already uh, gave us this number across 47,000 uh, different iterations, right? It does some averaging for us. So let's go ahead and look at the underlying assembly here. So we'll do perf report, and we'll go ahead and look at a DP bench here or benchmark. And we can see this really tight loop here. So this is what we're actually benchmarking and running over and over and over. So unsurprisingly, it's the hot spot inside of a program. And it does about what we expect for something like a dot product. All we're doing in a dot product is multiplying the elements from two vectors together and then accumulating them into a result. So here we see we have a move instruction. So we're loading a value followed by a multiplication with something in memory here. So this is our multiplication of our two items from our two vectors. Then we have this add down here, which is adding our uh, partial results together, right? And this other add, this is just our loop counter, right? We're going through the loop for another iteration. We're going to the next index. So that's all, all this add is doing. And then we just compare to see if we're done, right? We've gone through all the elements inside of our vector and we either jump back up to the top of the loop or we continue on, right? We finished with her dot product. So that's all our code is doing, right? It's handling uh, one element per iteration of this loop. Okay, so let's go ahead and enable our vectorizer, right? And recompile this application here and see you know, what that does for our performance. So here we'll take the exact same compile command. We'll go ahead and call our new executable zero dot product vector. And we'll add one more uh, optimization flag. We'll enable the vectorizer using dash F tree vectorize, right? That'll enable vectorization. Okay, so now we've compiled. Let's go ahead and do perf record and run um, our zero dot product vector. So we'll go ahead and run this. And what we see is the performance of our application improved by quite a bit. So we went from taking around 14.7 microseconds up here to only taking around 9.22 microseconds, right? And this is a value that we got or is kind of averaged out across these, you know, 75, 76,000 times that it ran that benchmarking loop. So we got a really big result here. Let's see how our underlying code changed. And we'll do that with perf report. So let's go ahead and see our vectorized version of this uh, inner loop here. So you can see that things got a little more complicated here and we're starting to use some different registers here. So now you can see we're doing using these XMM registers. So unlike our other registers, uh, XMM registers are 128 bits. Um, so wider registers that we can fit more values into. And you can see instead of doing, you know, just individual multiplications on single elements here, you can see we're actually doing these much wider multiplication, multiplications, these packed multiplications, and these packed add instructions here to um, operate on multiple elements at the same time here. And you can see that now every iteration of this loop, we're actually actually processing four different elements here. So now we're moving over kind of 16, uh, uh, we're moving over, yeah, 16 bytes at a time, right? 16 bytes, the same size as four integers. So we're operating on four integers um, on each iteration of this loop. We're using these vector instructions here, right? That are operating on these 120 bit wide registers, right? XMM4, XMM2, and so on and so forth. So that's where our performance is coming from, right? We're now using instructions that are operating on multiple pieces of data at the same time. Okay, but we can take this a little bit further. So by default, your compiler isn't going to uh, necessarily generate code that's optimized for your specific architecture unless you tell it to. And the way that we can you know, tell our compiler to you know, optimize for our specific architecture is by adding the flag dash M arch with GCC. So we can specify a specific architecture that we want to optimize for and use the specific instructions of. Not every instruction is supported on every architecture. So your compiler won't necessarily uh, try to use them by default. So in this case, to just you know, optimize and you know, use instructions for my local processor, I'll do dash M arch is equal to native here. And let's go ahead and change the, uh, we can go ahead and change the name of our output executable here. Um, and we'll you know just add M arch, right? Or arch to the end of our executable name. Same other flags though, O2 optimizations, linking against libbenchmark, libpthread, using the C++ 20 standard, and again, 
F tree vectorize, but we've now added also in March is equal to native. So we'll go ahead and compile this and we'll do perf record and we'll now run, um, you know, this, th this one that's been vectorized, but for a local architecture. So we'll go ahead and run dot product vector arch and let's see what the performance looks like. So you can see we got another very large boost in performance here. So we went from, you know, 14.7 microseconds initially to 9.2 microseconds once we enabled the vectorizer or the auto vectorizer, and then down to, you know, 3.59 microseconds um, while, you know, optimizing and using our local architecture's instructions. So let's go ahead and see what those instructions are and what they look like. So we'll go ahead and do a perf report here. Right? And we can see that you know, our, heart, our hotspot is this very tight loop here where we're doing our dot product. But now you can see that it looks very much like our first, uh, you know, the first uh, loop that we looked at, um, except instead of processing um, you know, a single element each iteration of this loop, we're now processing eight elements each iteration of this loop. So we have this vectorized move instruction where we're loading into this YMM register. This register is a 256-bit register, so it can store um, or hold eight integers at a time. Then we have this uh, multiplication instruction here. So now we're multiplying eight integers at a time, right, inside of these YMN registers. And then you can see, you know, we have this add. So now we're adding or doing this packed add of eight integers at a time here. So you can see, you know, exactly what we're doing each iteration of this loop. We're processing eight elements at once. And so you can see here, each iteration of the loop, we're moving over by 32 bytes here. Um, so you know, 32 bytes, the same size as eight integers, right? So that's what this add is doing. So we vectorize this even further. Now we're doing eight wide uh, SIMD instructions here, right? 256 bits being processed at a time, eight total integers. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. It's a brief introduction to this idea of vectorization and enabling vectorization in your programs. And specifically, we're looking at how we can tell our compiler to do these things. Now, in many cases, you know, our, our compiler's vectorization will be good enough. But in cases where, you know, our compiler doesn't make the most optimal decisions or doesn't necessarily even use all of the vector instructions available, sometimes we have to go in and tune things ourselves. So we'll go ahead and see an example of how we can do this um, in later videos. But like I said, that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. As always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But again, that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and hope you have a nice day.